If you want to make God laugh, just tell him what your plans are in life. And I think that's very true, and I think that applies to me, because I thought that my life was going to take a different direction, a particular direction, but it turns out that my life was unfolding. Uh, God had other plans for me. I come from a religious family. I have three brothers. I have one younger brother, two older brothers. And my memories would be uh, when I was younger, saying the rosary every night. My parents were very strict on us saying the rosary. So I do remember that, and that stayed with me in many ways. I studied biology at university. I was interested in the sciences. At university, it was clear that I didn't really have a full grasp of my faith, so things weren't really clear. So when I came to university, there were a lot of bright minds there, there were a lot of people asking me questions. I studied evolution for a while, and this was quite a uh, contentious thing. So many people were saying, how can you be religious? How can you believe in God um, and be studying evolution at the same time? You know, these are, and I didn't have the answers to the questions. You know, these were difficult questions. Um, how can I believe? How can I prove God exists? You know, all these questions. So this was a time of difficulty for me at university. I attended various courses. There's a, an organization, the Faith Organization. I went along to some of their uh, summer conferences and they helped to answer some of these questions. They gave concrete uh, Catholic answers to some of these difficult questions that I had. I think at the end of my university years, I was aware that I just didn't really um, have that full knowledge of my faith and I, need, I wanted more, I wanted more. So I came away with a degree in biology um, and that was good. It was at that point that my eldest brother got in touch and said, look, you know, I'm, I'm running the family business, perhaps it would be good I could do with some help, it's a busy time. So I thought, well, okay, perhaps I'll go along and, uh, and join in the family business just to help out for a while. And during those years, you know, I, I, I stayed, my, my faith was strong, but um, I had this growing sense that perhaps my heart was still being called for, to something more. Sometimes it was difficult to reconcile business ethics with Christian ethics. You know, there was this whole uh, thing in my mind going on, but, you know, it was good. I learned a lot about, about people and about the, about the world, really, during those, those years. After about 12 years of working in the business uh, with my brother, I thought to myself that, you know, perhaps I have many things in this world that people strive for. You know, I had um, a good salary, I had good holidays, I had a good job, I had many friends, um, I was traveling around having great holidays. But did that really fulfill my heart? I reached a point where I had to uh, really uh, ask myself that question, is my heart fulfilled? So. It was at that stage then that um, I decided to take a year out. So I took a year out from work. I had to contend with that question in my heart. You know, was I really doing what God wanted me to do? So I left the business for a year. And, um, and then I went off and I went to Rome and I joined the Emmanuel community. It's um, School of Evangelization. 
That was very interesting because that was something completely different for me. I'd never done anything like that before. It was a great year. I met some great people. At the end of that year, I had this sense that my heart had been fulfilled, more of a sense of fulfillment in my heart. So then it reached a point where I thought, okay, perhaps I need to take this to another level, to another step. Is God in fact calling me to something more, perhaps even to the priesthood, the religious life? But more than that, in a spiritual way, I did feel in my heart that I was being called to something deeper. At that point, I applied for seminary and uh, I got through the interviews and, uh, and the process began. Um, I remember it was a very busy time. Um, I went straight from the working environment. I think it was even on the same day in the afternoon. Then I went to seminary in the afternoon. I remember looking at my diary and thinking, gosh, I got these business meetings this morning and then this afternoon I start seminary. <laughs> it was quite a radical uh, change in that, in that respect. The seminary environment was quite challenging in many ways. The environment was quite um, uh, restrictive in some ways. You know, you feel a, a, a slight loss of sense of freedom. Also, I had worries and concerns. I worried about things that never even came into fruition. You know, I worried about how I was going to survive financially, if this was even the right thing for me to do. Um, so I had all these concerns, but God has a way of rearranging the furniture in your life so that uh, ever so often the things that you worry about never even happen. And The world is a noisy place and in order to try and really discern one's vocation, you have to listen with your heart. And to listen with your heart is a difficult thing to do. Uh, in the noisiness of, of life, of the world. But in the seminary, um, it's a great place to discern. I remember at some point in the seminary, I'd have to have these meetings with the rector, and the rector would ask me and say, so why is it that you want to be a priest? And I would think about that, and I'd think, well, at this point, I don't know if it was really in my heart that I wanted to be a priest. But what I did know was that I loved Jesus very much. So I loved Jesus in my heart, and I wanted to do what he wanted me to do. And I felt that he wanted me to become a priest. And eventually I went through the, the process and after about six years, my ordination dates came forwards. It was a great day of joy. And I remember there were three of us being ordained in the Clifton Cathedral and things went very well. It was a beautiful day. I think that for me, I would say that um, I noticed that all those years I spent in the business world um, were good because there are transferable skills. I realized that, you know, I've picked up some transferable skills which are very useful to have here in the parish, um, just really in how to relate to people um, and how to perhaps run a parish um, effectively and um, fruitfully, I would say. Um, I'm always a great believer that, you know, um, it's not about success, but it's about faithfulness. Fruitfulness and faithfulness rather than success. You know, this world always gives great uh, pressure and focus on getting results and getting success. Um, but that was something that was, you know, related to my previous life. But now I feel I've moved on and I have more of a sense of just being faithful to Jesus and looking for the fruits that can come from that.
I want to give my blessing to Shalom TV, to all those who work in it, and to the work that they are doing, and all those who receive their message. I hope that you will continue to be God's instruments in the world and to evangelize with power and confidence. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.